Up to this point, we have been using a single object as our point instance. However, if we zoom in on the point instance node, you can see that we have two options, object and collection. This time, let's create a new collection in Blender and use the collection as our point instance system. To start with, I'm going to add a new object, Shift A, Mesh, Icosphere. Then I'm going to set the radius to something like 0.2 and press enter. By doing this in the operator panel when the object is created, we're not altering the scale. So we don't need to apply the scale by going control A if we manipulate the values here in the operator panel. Next, I'm going to add a new collection by right clicking in the outliner panel, select new collection and just rename this new collection as instance obj. Then I'm going to position my icosphere inside my instance obj collection and do the same with the cube object. Then select the plane once again, choose collection from our point instance node. And when we do that, you will see that all of the scattered points have disappeared because we don't have anything defined here. Left click and select instance obj. So as soon as we do this and zoom in, you can see that we are creating instances of both the cube and the icosphere. There is just one issue, and that's the fact that the instance is being created at the same location. So even though we have multiple objects, both objects are being created each time in the same point. If we select one of these objects, such as our icosphere, and hit G to move that object, you can see that it impacts all of the individual particles. So if I lock this to the X axis, for example, or maybe the Y and reposition, you can see the effect that this has on each individual particle that has been scattered around our plane. However, this is not really the sort of behavior that you want if you're trying to randomly generate your particles. This doesn't look as random with a cube and an icosphere sat next to each other at every generated instance. Fortunately, the solution is much simpler than you might think. In the point instance node, we have a tick box that says whole collection. When this is ticked, it basically applies the entire collection of objects to each generated instance using their transform values such as the location. However, by unticking this box, like so, and zooming out, you will be able to see that now each instance holds only a single object from that collection. If I was to add a third object to my collection, so I'm going to select instance obj, hit shift a, then go monkey, reduce the size to about 0.2, reposition on the Y axis to about here, and then select my plane object. What I can do is I can just increase my value and you will see that we are generating the cube, icosphere and Suzanne objects but always in different locations to each other. This in comparison to setting it to whole collection, which uses the transform values of the entire collection for each particle that's generated. That's a very important point to consider whenever you are using collections for your point instancing.